Wednesday, June the 10th. Lake levels 929 and just over three quarters. So it's you know just a few inches under 930, and it's actually came up all day today. You know we had a couple inches of rain a few days ago. Everything down below us is full. Uh, they've just now started generating a little bit of water this evening, but they haven't been moving much water. And uh, I mean, today was brutal out there. It was it got cold and the wind blew like heck. It was uh, it was hard to fish a lot of spots. But you know, I think the bite slowed down quite a bit. Uh, my top water bite definitely has. It seemed like you know them shad had been spawning. And the first couple hours in the morning, if you get around the shad spawn. There's quite a few active fish, but uh, that seems like uh, it's pretty much stopped for me. I can still get, you know, an occasional topwater bite. I might throw it for a half hour, 45 minutes each morning, see if I can catch a few fish on it. But it seems like a lot of the fish that I'm catching have gone down the bottom. You know, I was catching quite a few suspended fish on swim baits, uh, scrounger heads, stuff like that. But it seemed like a lot of those fish that I was catching have gone down the bottom as well. And you know, uh, you know, like I say, the fishing's kind of tough. You, and I like to go by the tournaments. You know, they had two good sized tournaments this past weekend. Uh, and both of them, it took good weights. One of them had 20 pounds, and I think one was almost 18 pounds the next day. But the weights really dropped fast. It went from like 18 to 16 to 14 down into 12. So usually when the, the fishing is really good, regardless of what the top weights are, like the top 10 will usually be, you know, pretty close. But it seemed like it dropped pretty hard and then it got down, you know, the average was probably 10, 12 pounds. And I noticed a lot of guys only had one or two fish. But the thing that's kind of been bailing me out uh, is these smallmouths. I'm really, uh, I really haven't got the Kentucky zeroed in as far as where they've gone. Normally they go out and suspend. We start catching them on a drop shot. I've got one or two places, seems like up in the James River that they've been bunched up a little bit. If there's, uh, when I can get on them, I can catch, you know, several from that spot. Most of them are, you know, fairly small, but you gotta go through five or six to get a keeper. But I'm still catching some real good quality smallmouth. And this is like Baxter Campbell Point down by the dam around Kimberling City. They're not as plentiful as they were, but the quality is still there. I'm not getting very many small fish. And it seems like the baits that are working the best for me is uh, tubes. You know, either three and a half or four inch tube, either this uh, green pumpkin with a little candy flake, uh, watermelon red or straight green pumpkin. I'm putting a quarter ounce head, ball head and jig up inside of it. And for the most part, I think a lot of these fish are about 12 to 18 to 20 foot deep. You know, I'm setting the boat in about 25 foot and every once in a while I'll catch a Kentucky and a large mouth as well, but been more small mouth than anything. And if you find one, you know, work the area real slow. There's gonna be two or three there. And you know, a lot of mainly gravel points. And you know, today was really strange where well, they hadn't been running any water and water was coming in, it was backing up. And uh, you know, I didn't mention water temperature, but the water temperature had been in the 80s, you know, lower 80s to high 70s, but it was kind of strange today when we got out of the main lake or the main river, back in the pockets, the further back we went in, you know, the water temperature would drop some places eight to, to 10 degrees, which, which was really odd because it didn't get that cold last night and the water's not all that stained up. A lot of times that dirty water will uh, cool down a lot quicker, but anyways, water temperature was really strange today out there where the a little bit of water flow, it's still in the high 70s. But back in some of the creeks where there isn't any water flow, where the water's actually backing up, we found the water to be a lot colder. And you know, scrounger heads, I've been throwing, this is a pulse scrounger head. I also throw the Lucky Strike quite a bit. And I like to use a, a five inch, uh, this is a caffeine shad, but a, a Zoom Super Fluke will work, or even a Magnum Fluke. Now, I still catch some fish on this, but instead of it being suspended, I've got to get the bait down the bottom and just kind of slow roll it off the bottom, just like you would a spinner bait. Now, I've tried a jig, and I you know, am, am catching some fish still on a Nedry, but I've tried to jig some where I'm catching these smallmouth, 
but it seems like they really want the tube. The only other bait I've been able to catch some fish on as well is this is a wobble head. This is actually a, a pig sticker, but like a, a Jean LaRue wobble head will work. And I've got a, a Zoom Magnum finesse worm on there, dragging it in a lot of the same places. A lot of the, a lot of the banks, like I said, are gravel. Uh, if you get on them banks early, try a topwater. You know, a lot of these fish, I said last week that once they start running current, I thought we could catch them on a crankbait. And I've had some on a crankbait, but it seems like I've got to have good water flow. I've got to have, you know, some current. When they had floodgates open a little bit last week, and I was able to catch some on a, a 6XD and a 5XD. And I'm throwing these in the same place I'm catching the smallmouth or like around islands on the inside of points, you know, real tight bends where the current's coming across the top. I'll either throw the scrounger head or the crankbait. And the colors depend on, you know, the water clarity. If I'm down by the dam in clear water, I'll throw like a, a chartreuse sexy sex shad or just a, a straight sexy shad. If I got a little stain in the water up in the river arms, I'll throw something with a little more a chartreuse and blue in it. Uh, this one here seems to work real good in the clear or dirty water. But uh, I'm just, you know, casting, making real long crass, cast, and burning the heck out of the crankbait. Five or six cranks, pause it for a second. Like I say, there's been some walleye mixed in with them, uh, a few largemouth and a few Kentuckys, but it seems like I've got to have good, strong current in order for this to work. I've been able to catch some fish on the, on the 5XD out in front of the bushes. You know, the bushes still got 12, 15 foot of water on them. If I parallel the bank, uh, 5XD, I've been catching a few fish on. And that's what I've been doing in a lot of these pockets. If I'm not fishing the points, when I go back into pockets, we'll parallel the bank with either the uh, wobblehead, neg rig, or tube or crankbait to catch some fish. And I know there's some good quality fish in the bushes, but to be honest with you, I have not got it figured out as far as what type of bushes they're on, how far back in the creeks. Uh, a lot of times guiding, I can't get, you know, back in there too awful far. But uh, I think some of these heavier stringers this past weekend probably came, you know, flipping out of some bushes. But if a guy can spend some time and find out whether they're on the points or how far back or even the type of trees that they're on, uh, you know, a guy could probably put a pattern together. Uh, I was catching some on the isolated trees. It seemed like it had to be oaks or sycamores and where the vegetation wasn't so, so thick. You know, the green bushes, I'm just having a heck of a time trying to get bit out of. If I can find some dead wood uh, like willows or solid, trunks of trees, of big trees, I can get a bite on, you know, on a beaver, Texas rig, baby brush hog, even a wacky rig cinco. But the bites are few and far between for me, but they are, you know, better quality fish. You know, hopefully, uh, looks like it's gonna be dry for a little bit. Some of this rain will stop. And I think once we get a steady current flow, you know, the bite's gonna pick up and get a lot better, get a lot more consistent. These fish should be pulling out on a lot of these long points once we get some current. But, you know, a lot of the points I've been checking has been no shad out there. You know, I'll catch one fish here, one them. Really not much of anything grouped up. Seems like I gotta move around a lot to, to catch fish. So, till next week, uh, good luck, good fishing.